Hi, welcome again. Today we are trying to look at how ray tracing affects landscape project in Unreal Engine. So let's get started. Here I'm talking about some of the lighting setup. If you don't have good understanding about lighting in Unreal Engine, specifically for landscape project, I have created a video. Just check the description below. So that will cover all the things you need to know about to get started with this video. So how do we enable ray tracing? Pretty easy. Go to edit project settings and then search for ray tracing then you need to click this checkbox just click, click that then you will have pop up and just click the yes for that as well but don't restart your engine just wait a little bit and then search for default RHI from here select DirectX 12 now you can restart your project and trust me it will take some time maybe a couple of hours if you don't have a good CPU, so just grab some coffee or tea and come back later on. First thing we need to talk about is shadows. And that's the very interesting part of ray tracing, especially for a landscape. So right now it's all cascade shadows. I can show you. So here you can see this, these pillars and shadows goes away when I move away. So that's how the cascade shadows works in Unreal Engine project. Now let's enable ray tracing shadows right for that one i'm gonna select my directional light from the world outline and from the details panel and search for ray tracing yeah then you will have some options here right now i'm gonna enable this one now you can see now my shadows completely change if you look at this uh, mountain range this is without ray tracing and this is with ray tracing and so that's the beauty of ray tracing so because it can calculate all the uh, geometry and then get the realistic shadows for me with cascade shadows it's it's possible but it's quite costly then let's uh, talk about performance numbers so let me enable some of the stats uh, before we talk about these numbers right now ray tracing is enabled let me put the player and uh, try to understand how the frame rate looks like so i'm getting close to 60 70 frames a second it's depending on the place i'm looking at so let's disable ray tracing and let me put the player back here i'm getting around some something around 60 to 70 frames a second so you, you can see like there's a quite uh, reasonable frame drop but the the look we get is really great if you're looking for something like that yeah simply go for that so next thing is reflections right let me go to my puddle area very poor until engine has screen space reflection so the limitation is you cannot see the stuff you cannot see on the screen as reflection so now let's enable ray tracing base shadows so that one i'm gonna need to look at post processing volume so i'm gonna select that from the world outline and go to the details panel and then search for reflections so then i need to select screen space to ray tracing so now we have ray trace enable reflections so as you can see now i don't have any restrictions like that so I get the real realistic reflections and it looks really nice. All right, this is cool. So let me disable ray trace based reflections. This is the default screen space reflections. Let me put my player. Right, I'm, I'm getting around something close to like 60, yeah, 60 frames. Let me enable ray trace and let me put my player. Right, it drops around like 40 to 50 frames a second. Again, uh, quite drop, but the the result you get is really interesting. If you if you're looking for that, simply go for that. All right, let me disable this. All right, next thing we are going to look at is ambient occlusion. For that one, let me go over to my simple rock. In this case, uh, we also need to like look at the post processing volume. Select that from the world outline and search for ray tracing on the details panel and you get this ray tracing ambient occlusion and now let's enable ray trace see the difference so this is without that so you can see these dark shadows here dark areas so that's the sort of fake but if we enable ray trace so we get a realistic look yeah this is pretty great and about the performance uh, let's check so th this is without that so let me put my player. So now I'm getting uh, 50 to 60 frames a second without the ray trace support. And let me enable ray trace. Right then it, it's 
yeah it's it drops a little bit but i think uh it's quite good here so then uh, this is a good feature you can uh, easily enable that and of course you need to check with your application or your your game so in this case this is a this is a win now let's have a look at global illumination before we do that let me turn off ray trace base embedded occlusion all right then from the this section global illumination again in the post processing volume i can enable that so let me enable brute post right so now you get like there's a like a subtle change but it's really hard to see but depending on the scene it will have effect in this case uh, it's uh, the the effect is very subtle but the performance cost is really high let me show you that so this is without that so we know we are getting around 60 frames a second without issues all right and then let me enable global illumination with ray tracing and the frame rate drops to like 20 frames a second and it's quite bad the reason is because the the this landscape is quite huge and it will take a quite a lot of time to like calculate it but if you are looking for an indoor scene i think the this is quite okay now we have a look at some of the common or most useful ray trace based features you can enable for a landscape just for fun uh, let's try to enable all these features and try to see how it looks all right uh, let me put my player back so this is without any ray trace based features uh, i can easily hit 60 frames a second this is quite playable then let me enable shadows ray trace based shadows all right and then uh, post processing volume let's enable reflection all right okay and then uh, enable ambient occlusion so let's uh, turn up global illumination for a second let me put my player right the frame rate simply drops to from 60 to 40 30 40 frames a second uh, yeah still uh, it's playable now let's uh, try to enable global illumination uh, and now i can imagine how easy i could play the game right so basically it's uh, yeah below 20 some yeah it's really hard to play with this sort of frame rate okay uh so now the question is when we can enable ray tracing okay that's a, that's a pretty interesting question if you're looking for a game uh it's i think we're not ready to enable ray trace at this point but if you're thinking about the like virtual production or maybe something you need like 30 frames a second and there are quite good features you can enable especially with shadows and uh, ambient occlusion and of course if you're doing offline rendering then definitely go for the uh, all the features and yeah it's really nice here i want to mention i'm using a rtx 2060 card which is the lowest in the rtx range and i think if i have a, like a 30 series card uh, the the result will be different and uh, we know like getting a 30 series rtx card is quite hard these days so then uh, let's imagine two years from now i think the story could be completely different uh, we will definitely enable ray trace and crank up these all these features and get a nice nice look all right that's it that's how i explain ray trace and how that affect landscape projects in uh, unreal engine all right see you soon with something cool bye